Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I will be going over some random PowerShell scripts that I acquired over the years. Some of them will be very beneficial and I use some of them on a daily basis. So let's get started. The first one will be listing a date range. When I say that, it will list days with dates based on a date range and the output will be in grid view. There are two variables that you need to populate. The first one is the start date right here. And the second one is the end date right here. I do wanna note that it can be any dates. In this case, I did January 1st through January 31st. Let me go ahead and run this script. And this is the output. So you can tell by looking at this that there are 31 days, obviously because it's one through 31, but you can also see what day of the week it falls on. Let's say you need to see the whole year. You can quickly type in December 31st, run the script and it literally runs in seconds maybe milliseconds. But this one is a interesting one because it does have 366 days shown up here in the title. So that means it's a leap year. Leap year, that means the month of February has 29 days instead of 28. The next script will print out weekdays. So quickly you can run this and here's the output, Sunday through Saturday. What's also nice about this script is it puts the output onto your clipboard. If I do a control V, here is your weekdays. Let me zoom out a little bit. This one is a dynamic random password generator. This will randomly create a password based on the criteria. The criteria in this case is up here. You can have a password with uppercase letters, lowercase letters. You can have password with numbers zero through nine special characters, which are shown here. There's more special characters and then also curly brackets. I found out that it only accepts 88 characters. I am not sure why, but that's what I found out. And let's go ahead and run this so you can see the output. I set it to 50 characters long. So this is uh, 50 different characters. And also I put the password onto your clipboard. So if I do control V, here is the password down here. You can rerun this multiple times and every time you rerun this, it will generate a different password. You can shorten this to 20 characters. And you can also then play with the different variables. Let's say the web page that you're working on doesn't allow special characters and curly brackets for whatever reason. So in that case, you would just delete these three variables like that and hit the run script F5 button. And now you can see the output is only uppercase, lowercase, and numbers. So this can be useful if you don't know how to set a random password or if you're too lazy to think of one. So you can just rerun this until you see what benefits you. Let me do a control Z to undo all the changes. This one will be a file name search and it will search for file names in directories 
And what's nice about this script, it also searches hidden files. The output will be to a CSV file. So there are basically three variables that you would need to update on your site. In my case, the folder path that I will be searching is outlined right here. I am searching for a file name that contains hidden in the file name. See the little star that indicates, or asterisk that indicates a wildcard. So it will search anything that has before the hidden name and also after. And then the result path where it will store the output of the CSV file is gonna be right here in this path. So let me go ahead and run this. It takes a few seconds. And this will also invoke the Excel file, or in this case, it's a CSV file, but it will open it in Excel. Right here is the output. It named the file to the current date and time. And also the tab name down here is current date and time. And then here is the full path to the file that it found. I had a hidden file called hidden text file.txt. And the last modified is November 4th. And the length, not sure what the length is, but that's okay. Let me show you this folder path. Give me one second. Here is the directory. And as you can see the hidden text file, you can see it's grayed out and it indicates that it is a hidden file. You can also test that by checking the properties and you can see the attributes, the hidden flag has been selected. It's a nice little file name search that searches through directories. Here is another one. This will search file names, including directories, output to a grid view. You can output the result set into different formats. Let's go ahead and run this. And here you can tell that it ran really quick since it is initiating the out grid view. So it didn't have to write to the Excel file, but Regardless, it found three files, total count three. And I searched for file names that contain the file name in it. So the hidden text file, this was a hit and normal text file and the query SQL file. And you can also see all that right here. So here are the three files that were hit. This one will search words within files. So it can search for patterns within files such as .text, .log, .sql, etc. And also the output will be in grid view. In this case, I am again searching this directory and the pattern I am searching is three, four, five. So let's go ahead and run this. It had a hit, you see how quickly this executed. And it found this file, normal text file.txt. It said that there's a pattern of 345 on line number two. And this is the line that it found it. Here's the line. This is just a random text file with a random ID one, two, three, four, one through nine. So if we go to this directory and open this text file, you can see that it looked through the files and it founded this pattern on line two, like it indicated. So it's a pretty neat script. 
to have under your belt and you can modify it to search different directories say if you want to search the c drive all you would do is clear all this out and this would search across your whole c drive doing this though it will take some time because it will go through every directory and subdirectory and so it would take quite a lot of time to complete this but it is available for you you can also do folder search it searches for folders and folders within and allow wildcard search which i mentioned earlier with the asterisk or the star sign and it will also search hidden folders and when i say hidden folders this is the the command that searches hidden folders so if you do a dash force this will search hidden folders so in this case i'm searching for a folder name that has sec in it and here is your output if we go to the search folder hidden folder it contains the word sec and that's where it found the name and also this folder is hidden and you can do that by looking at the properties and the attribute hidden has been selected this one will generate numbers 1 through 100 with a comma separated the first section will be displayed in horizontal comma separated and the second section of the script is a vertical format, no commas. In order to just run this section, you can highlight the script itself and you can also highlight the, the comment. And two ways, you can run this button and then it tells you right here, run selection or press the F8 key. Here is your output one through 100 let me do that again and just run the code oh in this case i would have to clear the host so that way it would read nicely so one through 100 and it puts it on the clipboard and down here and let's go ahead and just for demo purposes i'm going to do control v and here's your one through 100 this one will run one through 100 but this time it's going to be in a vertical format as you can see and you can easily change this to 50 f8 and now you have a list of 1 through 50 sometimes this script can be useful moving on to the next script reading data from excel and it will print it in powershell so this script will read the data from a excel file that i have and it will extract that data and print it onto the console down below let me go ahead and just run the script and then i'll explain what it does So right now it's reading the data and it's complete. Here's the output of the script. My name is John. John is 22 years old and lives in Chicago. And then here's your next name, Edward, 36, Houston, Michael, 57, Los Angeles, and Susan, 42 years old, lives in Seattle. So this was fairly quick. And let me go ahead and open this file so you can see how it is stored here are the names so john 22 as we saw previously in the powershell output but basically it read this data and it printed out the data onto the console not sure if I have time to explain all of this, but basically these are the main values you would verify and you would set. 
So I set the file name of the Excel file and the sheet name was named sheet one. And now it does all the work behind the scene. Here's the right output. So it printed it that my name is the name, age, and city. And I also included a divider between the different set of values. And lastly, it closes the Excel file. And let's jump to the last script here. This one is a welcome to my web page script. It will create a web page in seconds with custom fields. I have about six different values here. Name, John Smith, font color blue, family, font family, Arial, type beer, price 8.99 and age 25. Let me go ahead and run this and you'll see the output. Hit F5. Now here is your web page. So it says, welcome to John Smith's web page. John Smith's age is 25, and I'm printing out this means he can buy beer. So it's all dynamic. It pulls all those values from the partial script. And then I just threw in a different formatting of the date time. So current date is November 19, and start time is when I turned on the computer at 8.35 a.m. Let's go revisit the PowerShell script. So you can change this to meet your needs, but basically here is the script and the HTML script within the PowerShell. So here's how I am building the title, John Smith's web page, welcome to, and I'm plugging in the name here, and then the font color and different formatting. And then I'm initiating the HTML file and I'm opening it with Chrome in my case, because I have that HTML files associated with not Chrome, but Firefox in my case. And that's it. If you wanna say something else besides this, say Joe Doe, you say this red color, we'll leave the font same, ice cream for $3.99 and 67 years old. Run this and here's the web page. Welcome to John Doe's web page. His age is 67 and so on. But it's something to play around with and hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please hit that thumbs up button and also subscribe to my channel. I will be putting out more PowerShell scripts along with other Windows tips and tricks such as auto hotkey. I have some ideas on how to share tips and tricks from Excel, Microsoft Word, Outlook, and just different tips and tricks and automation tricks I do have under my sleeve. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.